Good morning. It is 10.08 a.m. on Sunday, April 30th, 2017. I'm Christiana Ellis, and I still have a cold, and it sucks. Plus, I just got up. This is five more minutes. So it's Sunday, which means it's time to resume the regularly scheduled Avatar The Last Airbender rewatch discussion for this particular installment. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, episode in question is Season 2, Episode 16, Appa's Lost Days. And this is a really cool episode because it really doesn't feature any of the main characters for more than just a few little snippets here and there. Um, but uh, it's basically we've spent the last several episodes thinking, where is Appa? Where could he be? But uh, now we find out exactly. We we spend the entire episode chronicling Appa's travails and troubles during the uh, time period, including interacting with a whole lot of different uh, side characters and catching up with an awful lot of things, and even just giving us a, uh, a hint of the future as well. So, very cool stuff there, and um, it's very emotional if you are, like I am, a sucker for animal stories. But just, you know, poor Appa, he just wants to find his buddy, and he's so much trouble. And, and also just the reveal, too, that part of the reason they've been having so much trouble finding him in Boston Say is that's not where he was. Because, uh, just, so first, you know, we have him continuing to struggle while uh, they try to transport him, being a lot of trouble uh, in that regard. His ability to just lift up <laughs> into the uh, uh, air off of the sled um, means that they have to drug him. Uh, but then he's so much trouble that the original people who buy him, which incidentally just, uh, you know, Oh, those beetle-headed guys, and we're like, what? What does that mean? And then we see that they literally have their hat, their hats are shaped like beetles. Anyway, um, he's so much trouble that they just say, well, I, you know, we might not be able to get him all the way to Ba Sing Se. We might, well, and the uh, first implication is sell him for parts, and it's like, <clears throat> oh, my God, that's awful. But then, fortunately, uh, um, they sell him to a, like, a firebender circus. And, uh, you know, there's some silliness initially there. I mean, we're scared for him. You know, he's chained. He's in a cage. The implication that they're going to starve him uh, to make sure he behaves properly. Um, but then we see him using his own natural sort of airbending to... to uh, suck up cabbages even when he's not supposed to be uh, given them yet and so we're kind of laughing at that point of the fun but the abuse that he takes uh, over time there uh, giving him uh, a fear of fire which kind of persists into later in the episode as his journey continues and that's kind of, you know the whole thing is traumatic for this poor this poor gentle creature But, you know, he makes friends with the one little kid who um, helps him, you know, get, get this uh, bale of hay and reminds him of Aang. And, and it's just, you know, Appa's got such a great, you know, gentle soul to him. And it's fun. But, you know, all sorts of, uh, I, you know, I feel like, although I love this episode dearly, let me, I guess it still just makes sense to kind of talk through the various bits because otherwise, uh, you know, it's hard to know exactly what to talk about. But certainly um, the, one of the things that's interesting about the circus is uh, kind of like the firebending demonstration that the kids went to uh, a little while back, uh, having, uh, you know, another depiction of Fire Nation culture that isn't just military stuff. Um, and at least in this particular example, um, it's not super harmless, you know. And in fact, even though this kid is nice, we also see that he's traveling with what maybe his dad, I guess, 
who's kind of mean. Um, and then, uh, but so Appa, oh, well, and I suppose we should also talk about the, the weird clown performer outfit that they put uh, Appa in, which I don't know that it means a lot other than just kind of making him look silly. But again, you know, it's the idea of using him in this demeaning way. But, you know, he's able to escape and um, fly away from there. But then what's heartbreaking to realize is that, of course, of course he doesn't know where Aang is. And so he flies all the way back to where the library was, where he was taken from. And it's like, oh, no, that's so sad. And then he doesn't know what to do there. He's flying through the desert. Um, in, in the meantime, we're getting all of these, uh, you know, these um, flashes of um, uh, um, all, all these flashes of when he was very little and when he got uh, picked by um, by Aang in their initial bond and discussion of like, oh, it's, you know, we're bonded for life. Um, oh, see, I was, I was going to pull up just a little description here, but it was... Uh, it's not a not a not a good website. Um, so let's see. Uh, I'm just trying to make sure I don't miss anything because I'm a little scattered because I still have a cold or something and it sucks as previously discussed. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, and it's also interesting just that, the, you know, in the circus they call him a wind buffalo instead of an air bison, you know, a, a sky bison, um, flying bison. Uh, <laughs> boy, the synopsis is really detailed. It's way more detailed than I'm getting into. It's literally like just every single thing that happens is just described. <laughs> All right, so... Um, as uh, <laughs> it even has uh, the the little lizard thing that steals the egg away from Appa is apparently a gila corn, according to this site. <laughs> this is the Avatar Wikia. Um, but in any case, oh yes, it's the farm that he goes to next. He's looking for food while he's in the the desert, and uh, it's you know it's it's a good example of just how he. He appears so scary to anyone else, but then because they are scared, he gets scared, and then the fire, and and again, it's one of those things where you just, you know, people with good intentions can miss each other because they don't understand him, and he doesn't, he doesn't trust everybody, and so uh, it's, uh, you know, a sad thing because once again, he's... Um, you know, flying away, um, and then of course we. Let's see. Uh, oh, oh, and I don't want to forget the idea, the implication that this connection between Aang and Appa suggests that they're actually sharing the dream of when they, uh, of when they bonded with each other, and that's that's a nice touch, and it also is a great way to uh, have it. Uh, constantly checking in with the timeline because we see that when Aang is sharing the dream, we see that this is when they, he was camping out on the Serpent's Pass on the way to Ba Sing Se. So it fixes the place in time, uh, which is a really great technique that this episode uses throughout of just finding little touchstones to tell us, okay, when in the time that has passed since um, is this. Um, and so, okay, so after he's flying away from the farmer, uh, he, this is the bit where he flies over the ship with Iroh and Zuko on it and Zuko's asleep and Iroh sees it and he's like, uh, oh, um, and then it's an interesting moment because we see him clearly decide not to tell Zuko what he saw. Um, which, you know, given the place that Zuko and Iroh are at, you know, going into Ba Sing Se like that. He doesn't want to get uh, Zuko wound up again in that regard. 
Um, and then so uh, at this point, uh, Appa finds this little place that might be kind of a good place to hang out, except that it's occupied by a boar. And then he ends up having to fight this boar. And it's rough and he's filthy at this point and injured. And he wins and drives the boar off and claims that space. But he's in rough shape by now. And so how great that he's found by by Suki and the Kiyoshi Warriors. And it's like, aw. <laughs> and, and at this point, you know, I think everyone is watching is feeling hopeful of like, oh, this will be how how they're reunited. Because surely Suki and the Kiyoshi Warriors, they they found Appa. They'll not only take good care of him, but they will um, find a way. They they know Aang was looking for him, so they'll find a way to send that message. And indeed we see Suki really wisely having everyone approach very gently uh, so that they don't scare him off, recognizing that he's in, in uh, rough shape. And then they get him cleaned up and, uh, and you know, some of his injuries treated a little bit. But then, uh-oh, Azula, Mai, and Tai Lee show up. And so there's a fight between them and the Kyoshi Warriors. And it ends... <laughs> They, so Suki sends Appa off, but Appa doesn't want to leave them behind when they're in trouble. But then Suki says, no, no, you have to go and drives him away. And so he flies away and we don't know how it happened. It deliberately goes to a freeze frame with that, leaving it unresolved. It's Suki and Azula fighting. It's like, oh no. So that's a, a tense place to leave that. That's a really big unresolved plot point now. Um, it's scary, um, especially since uh, I'm trying to think at the timeline here. This would probably be shortly before Azula, Mai, and Tai Li uh, show up with the drill. So, yeah, because this is this is while they're tracking them on the Serpent's Pass. Am I remembering this right? God. Yeah, like, I'm sorry, I'm a little fuzzy today. Um... But yeah, so that just means, you know, Azula's fine after this, but uh, so in any case, um, at this point, uh, we have Appa who's, at, he doesn't know where to go. So he's, he's just starts flying all over and we see him fly over some um, water tribe ships, uh, including seeing Katara and Sokka's father. Um, he goes all the way back to the eastern early uh, eastern air temple, and this is this is what may be kind of the coolest part of the episode, is he finds this old guy uh, just hanging out there, and at first we're not sure what's going on there, but this guy, you know, he's he doesn't seem to be a bender as far as we can tell, but he's got the meditation thing down, and he's very patient, and so he manages to kind of wait out this anger that Appa is feeling, recognizing it's like, oh no, you've you've gotten some some fear and lack of trust built up and we we want to try to help that. And so just gentle you know, again being very gentle with him, taking good care of him, uh, getting him food, um, and not forcing him to do anything he doesn't want to do. And um, recognize, and then he talks about how this is uh, Guru uh, Patik, and he is apparently able to read energy in some way. So, like, not a not a normal bender, but something he's got. And uh, in fact, talks about how he says he has a vision of meeting Ang there. Um, and this, and and the, that this vision happened years ago, so that would have had to be before Ang even and Appa were even on Frozen, and so that, to come to the Air, Eastern Air Temple and wait, so the idea that uh, this journey of Appa's is not only having him like, well, what happened to Appa all this time, and touching on various other side characters, but the idea that 
um, he has now met someone that Aang will meet in the future. And that's cool. And so uh, the, the guru ties a message to his horn um, and uses this con energy connection to tell Appa exactly where to go, which is great, except, oh no, he gets to bossing say, he thinks he's following the whistle. But it's actually that, you know, that guy, you know, that guy, <laughs> Long Feng, uh, the ruler of the Dai Li in Ba Sing Se, uh, who basically threatened Aang that uh, they'll make it hard to find Appa if he doesn't cooperate. And, and so we see him make the footprint that Momo found at the end of last episode. But then he is immediately captured by the Dai Li, which means after all of this, we still we are still denied the reunion that we've been longing for. And again, I'm a sucker for animal stories, and it's like, oh, I, this episode made me very emotional in that sense of um, poor Appa um, going through the, you know this various trauma and being lonely and and just wanting to find his way back to to Ang. Mm. All right. Anyway, um, that's this episode. So uh, next week we'll be back with the, you know, the the next episode, which is of course, uh, you know, episode seventeen of season two, uh, Lake Laogai, and we're coming right up towards the end of the episode. So including next week's, there's only four more in season two, um, and so we're making our way through this series. Things are progressing, and that's one of the things that's a joy about this series. A lot of, you know, kids' cartoons have kind of a nature of, you know, you have like a little bit of a story reset every uh, every episode, because, and so things don't really develop. But one of the great things about this story is the story actually does just keep going, and it's not even just about um, them going to a new place every time, but like events are happening that change the nature of the world and they matter and they have consequences. It's a great show, but I was so happy to see Appa again. And, uh, even though his, his story during these weeks was not a happy one, um, to, to know at least and, and have there be hope that there can be a reunion. And, you know, of course it's a rewatch, so I, I know what happens in principle, but, um, at the same time, I was just still very much in my in the moment watching the episode. But anyway, yes, uh, so I will uh, be back next week to talk more about Avatar The Last Airbender, and I will talk to you tomorrow for five more minutes.